So, um, just to come back to the timeline now, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to do it in chronological order. Yeah, yeah. So, that's another, you know, part of the evolution of Demolition Man. Yeah. Stopping actually writing physically on a pad yeah. and starting to just do it out of your head. Yeah. As Johnny, and for those who don't know, Johnny Osborne is a very prolific old time singer that's been singing for God he knows how long. He's still alive. He lives in New York and, you know, he's Buddha by Buddha by Buddha by Buddha by Buddha by yeah. number one. You yeah. know, yeah, you say, whoa. <laughs> yeah, these tunes are from way back in the day and, like, you know, they've just been regurgitated into jungle and into this and into that. Yeah. But, you know, this, this showed, man is still here. He actually gave me the, um, the advice on how to do my production. Right. I used to do a lot of. I used to put too much in the in the in the in, in the instrumental. There was too much stuff. So it's tech out. He used to be like, just make it breathe. Simplify. Even with my yeah. one drop rhythm, yeah. he'd be like, just make it breathe. You got too much in there. Yeah. You understand? And then it's him that really showed me, and I was like, you know what? I took that advice, and from there I haven't looked back. So yeah. that is even that is why the writing and um, building on the spot was kind of easy for me because I had the access to the studio, so I could do my thoughts and just record it one time. Yes. You know what I mean. Yes. Because even when I write, like even if I write something down, I have to record it same time. Yeah, because the melody, Cause sometimes you, you can't remember that, the yeah, melody. You ain't going to remember it so the next technology time. right now, you can re you record it on your phone, isn't it? So if I think of something... Yeah, yeah, just put it boom, in the phone. Just put it in the phone. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, yeah, so you've, you, you made that, you know, part of your transition into mm -hmm. being a more accomplished and a more, you know, more a more finely tuned artist, yeah. especially in a studio, because, yeah. you know, that's where you, you do most of your shining. So, so then... Speak just very briefly about Canada. What happened there? How did you get out there? Because you know? of the jungle. Jungle music. I went there in 2000. There you go. And that's when I realised how big my name was. Wow. Because that was, obviously I had done Europe, innit? I had Europe and England, but yeah. that was my first overseas, you know? really like. Oh, you, <laughs> you, headlining. Yeah. And headlining. You're, you're the big tune. I'm you're 50 the team. and MC Dyer. MC Dyer. Remember MC yeah, Dyer? Man, yeah, she came. That was, yeah, a, that was their first. She's trip. living in LA now. Yeah, she's living yeah. in LA. Yeah, man, I remember. And um, <laughs> we performed in um, Government. Remember Government? Yeah, man. All right. That was my first. It's closed down now. It's gone, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the first biggest crowd I ever performed to because it was around like, nearly 3,000. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it was yeah. huge. I was seeing banners. Demolition, man. <laughs> People at the Bunsen burners. And yeah, crazy. Brother? You see me done? Me yeah. sign autograph to me we brother. <laughs> I'll frisky and die I sign autograph uh, because they was on the stage with me. Yeah, yeah. So that is how I entered Canada. Okay. And then I ended up going there every year till around two thousand and five, maybe three times a year. Wow. I mean just getting booked out there. All the time. And then what it was two thousand, I met my, my son's mum. Okay. Yeah, Tafare. Yeah. And Zara, I met their mum, look about Shitalawa. Yeah. And I, uh, my son was born out there in 2005. Okay. So that's how I ended up, going, ended out, up yeah. going out to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where I formulated Enemy Art Productions. Okay, right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you was already quite good at what you were doing with the production side of things. You've been making good product. You've been pushing out, you know, a lot of big tunes. And how did you get in contact with Third Eye Recordings and how did that all become? But what it was, I wasn't even really pushing out tunes. I was working with Terry T on Knowledge and Wisdom, so he was really pushing out tunes. I was voicing the odd reggae tune here for a few people. Um, and then um, what it was, me and Terry had a studio above um, Music House okay. when they moved around to Tottenham, right. Tottenham Hill. Yes. Ne right next door to Pick Out Label. Yeah, I know, I know Pick Out Label. Yeah, yeah, his studio was right there. He but his distribution office was right there. We'd have to pass him, go up a little stairs, and I had one side of the studio, mm -hmm. and Terry had one side of the studio. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that. And then um, what it was, I had done a tune called um, Jungle Bust Me. Yeah. Yeah. I built the rhythm for it, and what happened was um, I had given it to him from Terry T, and um, what happened was. I don't know, there was there was a lot of connection and, you know, communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hadn't communicated properly. And what happened was now, I'd revoiced the track. Oh. Yeah, I'd revoiced it. And then Third Eye Records had come to check me at yeah. the studio. Okay. So he, he had to come, he come and check me on another, on another business. Yeah. And then I go, Simeo, can you link potential for me? 
He's like, yeah, I can link him for you. I go, tell him that tune what I gave him. I've revoiced it now. I've got better vocals. Can him fit it, pan it, and boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Obviously, Third Eye Records has gone down there. I'm giving it to him. Obviously, Third Eye's heard the record. Yeah. And I go, well, on. That tune, they're bad. Yeah. So, Third Eye is forward to me on New Year's Day, okay. 2010. All right. But differently, I know Third Eye from my youth. Right. It's not just to... So me. who is Third Eye? Third Eye is Sid Young. Sid Young. Yeah? The great Sid Young. The great Sid Young, okay. used to select my unit out. Yeah, man. <laughs> you yeah. see? Yeah. So I've known him because I used to go to Hamilton House School. Okay. And then Brookhouse and Upton House joined up. Okay. And that's how I get to know. Because Sid used to go to so school. So he used to go to well. Brookhouse, yeah. 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 So, um, He's come. To, he's forward to me on New Year's Day. I remember that man. I remember this. He was driving his Honda, and he's linked me. And he's like, "Yo, I'm outside." <laughs> so I've got outside, and he's like, "Hey, what? That tune there? I like the tune. I want to push the tune. Basically, I want to do a management thing with you. Mm -hmm. But we're not gonna do a contract now or nothing." Yeah. He said, "Right. It's now New Year's Day." He said, "Give me to." He said, "Give me to March." Yeah, and we're gonna shoot a video for the tune, yeah. and the tune is gonna be up. And if you like the work, what we've done, so it goes from there. We see how it goes from there, and we do a contract. And so said, so done. Okay. Because what it was, would you believe? I didn't tell nobody. I must have just told my mother. <laughs> I didn't tell none of the man. Them nobody. Yeah. I, just me and him. I said, all right, I'm gonna do this thing. Because like, I've had so much people forward to me. Say this and say that, and right. it never manifests. Yeah. You see me? But he forward, and I could see why he said what he did. He just wanted to show me what he could do first. First. Yeah. And if I'm happy with that, bring out you the paperwork, continue. can it? Right. You see me? So I've got my cousin as a, a lawyer to look over the works, and yeah. now my cousin's part of the team because even turned their record and said, Boy, yeah, your cousin's serious. You see me? So, yeah. yeah, you see me? So they formulated that. And then from 2010, that, that was it. We've never looked back. Yeah. We've, just, we've been partners. Yeah. You know I mean, I've yeah. been mean, partner labels in the Mayard Productions and Third Eye Records. Yeah, man. And it's, it? it's a formidable force out there, right? Yeah, man, because yeah, he, he see what I was trying to do. Yeah. And he came and he came and tidied up my ship, bro, because my ship was all, <laughs> all over the place. I'm yeah. not going to lie, bro. Yeah. And there's some people that will we'll, we'll more take interest in our artists because they see money. Right. Yeah? But right. because of friendship, he see that certain things was going on mm. around me. Mm. And he could see that, in a way, I was kind of being used. Mm. A lot of people was using me right. to do, because I didn't really know the business side. Yeah. So You're just an artist. I'm just you an just artist. Wanna, and, uh, I, mean, I had other people taking care of it on, with knowledge and wisdom because I take away myself from that now. Yeah. So he came and, you know what I mean, he done that for me. Um, Boy, since that time. So now we've got Third Eye Records, we've got Inner Yard Productions but you know what? doing their thing. We missed out a chunk when I was in Canada, because okay. I stayed in Canada, right? Right. And I came back to England. We'll come back to the Third Eye, right? 2010, okay. but you see, 2007? Yeah. I, I, I came over to England, because while I was in Canada, 2005, I've come up with Inner Yard Productions now, doing my thing, working with artists. Right. I still was coming back to England. Yes. Performing and doing things. And I've come back now and I've linked up with Stevie General, who okay. is Fat Man's son. Yes. And he's like, boy, I want you to come to Mirage, Fat Man's place up Yes. There. Finish your part there. Yeah. Come meet King Jammies. Okay. So I've gone there and met King Jammies. Basically, cut a long story short, he's like, boy, you have a manager? I did. Who was uh, my brother named Freddy, who was yeah. managing me in Canada at the time. Yeah. Called him because it was five hours behind, so it was easy to get hold of him. Yeah. Him and Jamie spoke. Cut a long story short, I've gone to Jamaica now for a month and I've recorded an album with King Jamie. Wow. Yeah. What kind of music? That was the, the, all of the the, the 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 veteran music, what King Jamie's had. Well, Which not all of them, but... You know most I mean? of that catalogue. Yeah, most of that catalogue there. Love it to the end of time. All yeah. the rhythm there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah, the taxi rhythm. Yeah, magic moments. Yeah, yeah. Taxi rhythm. Wow. Yeah, so we've done that. How did that feel, though, King? Come, Bruh, come that on, was man. like, come on, man. I stayed in Dunkirk, round where Red Square, where Spraga bends them. 
was staying, but Spragger was on tour. But yeah, I, was, I met Cutty Ranks and a few other people. Yeah. I was going to the studio every single day. Yeah. Met Bunny General. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Junior Cat. Yeah, I mean, I, um, Beanie Man. I met a few, got quite a few people. The first, actually, the first weekend we ran, it was King Jamie's birthday. So we had a party at his house. Mad. Yeah, nice. Like him, I mean, Zuro in the back there, Sabrina. Right. Yeah, so yeah. about Bounty Killer was there, Ghost. Everybody. Everybody, you know, yeah. I love the, uh, the respect that King Jammy showed me. And what's funny is that everywhere he was walking, he might have been a photographer and <laughs> some yeah, of the reporters yeah, yeah. were there and they might walk and then even stop and say, take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and he's introducing me so to everybody. So it's just all know, recorded. And he's just walking around like, yo, Bounty, meet me English artists, you know, rest them or this, you know. Then tell me they weren't rest them or them or the shaman. Yeah. And he's just walking around introducing me to everybody. He never had to do that. Yeah. You see me? So, yeah, man, Real that was tennis. nice. So I've, I've voiced for the Jammies. John John, Baby G, mm. and Jam 2. Okay. You know I mean? So that was a very, very honorable more, experience. More evolution and more experience. Bro, would you believe again, that's where I think I flourished and my writing changed. Mm. Because I've done this tune.